Hello, my name is Alan Newberry, and today we're going to be talking about the forging of a spear. More specifically, we're going to be talking about the socket end of the spear. And in this video, we will be forming this specific socket right here from this bar of W2 steel. So let's take a look. All right, the first thing that we're going to do is to widen the bar of steel and try to make kind of a triangular shape so that we will have the required metal to form the socket. As I'm forging out the width that I need to start the cone, I kind of get a couple of ears on the top of the uh, cone. So what I'm going to do is just knock those down with a big hammer. Um, then the next thing is I'm going to further refine the shape by narrowing the waist a little bit with a fullering tool. Here you can see where I have narrowed the waist with the spring fuller. Uh, the spring fuller is basically just a big bar of spring steel that has been kind of thinned out in the middle and then bent over and then hardened and tempered to form a spring so that it will kind of close and bounce back whenever you're forging. Now I'm going to go over here and further refine that waist that I started with the fullering tool. I'm going to taper off where the blade will start and then I'm also going to uh, work on the actual socket part as well. And here's where we're at so far. I've got kind of a nice triangular shape and it tapers into the blade. Um, it's still a little fat right there, so I'm going to kind of start to thin that back down a little bit. And I'm also going to start kind of widening the base of that triangle and kind of make it not quite as triangle shape anymore. So what we'll do there is that'll give us a little bit more meat whenever I wrap the um, socket around the bic, and that will help to have enough meat there so that the two sides can meet together. to see here is a trick that's kind of done off camera but what I did was measured around the circle with a little bit of overlap with paper to see how wide I needed my socket to be so you'll see me grab a piece of paper and then lay down what will eventually be the socket on that paper to see if it has reached the required size yet so now I'm moving over to the power hammer and I'm going to do that widening that I was talking about, kind of widening the base of the socket up a little bit so that'll give me enough width so that the two sides can overlap so that they can be forge welded together. This is the final pre-rolling shape. And now I'm going to go ahead and start rolling the socket. What I'm doing here is just using the shelf on my anvil and hammering it to get it started. Then I'm going to go ahead and just put it on edge and hammer it to get that roll started. Continue rolling using the hammer and anvil, just keep rotating it, finding the right angles to hit things to 
to forge the shape of the socket. Right here, I basically picked which part is going to be on bottom and which part is going to be on top. So now I can start rolling it a little bit more tightly. You've got to make sure you have a decent amount of heat. If it's thin, it loses heat quick, and you don't want to be banging on it while it's black because you'll make things crack. got it basically rolled up. It's time to go ahead and start moving it over to the BIC. Um, with this, first I'm just kind of driving it on there so that I can get that BIC all the way up there as far towards the uh, beginning of the socket as I can. And so I'm just hammering from the other end and then kind of starting to do a little bit of the wrapping. But you can't do a whole lot of it in that first heat just because once you put it on there, the thin metal wants to cool really quick. I basically got the socket prepared for forge welding. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and grab some flux. What I'm using is borax. There's a lot of other types of flux you can use, but that's what I'm using here. So I'm just going to sprinkle that on while it's nice and hot, and it'll start bubbling up and melting, and then we'll get that back in the forge, and we'll be able to get this weld started. welding you're going to want it to be really hot. You can see here it just kind of has this great glow to it. You kind of see vapors coming off of it and it looks pretty cool. But it has to be really hot for them to actually forge weld together. If it's not hot enough it's just not going to stick. If you get it really any hotter it's going to start sparking and melting away. So there's a real you know, narrow window of heat that you're going for. It's, it's towards the top end, and you have to be very careful and keep an eye on it. It's not something you want to stick it in the forge and walk away from. You've got to make sure you're really paying attention here. When you're forge welding, you really hope that you get it the first time. The second time, maybe you're going to have, you know, still the ability to have some success. But really, after each additional time, it kind of gets a little harder and harder for you to be able to get things to stick. I, I try it several times here, and I think I really get most of it to stick pretty good. But really, it's those first couple times when you're wanting it to work. Right here, I come over and I just bend that right back because, hey, this is forging. You can still bend and move the metal around. have the finished socket. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions, place them in the comment section below. Thanks.